Hello my soccer universe! A month ago, roughly, I promised we'll do another Premier League review video and I thought, yes, we're in between two European uh, weeks. It's a good time to actually look at the Premier League, especially since there was also midweek action that had some impact there as well. However, I want to do it a little bit differently and this might actually be a way going forward for me of doing review videos and being able to cover a little bit more. You know, I'm recording after every round, I record usually one or two shorts summarizing the action. And so instead of me summarizing it here again, I decided, okay, let's take these short videos and stitch them all together to get it caught up. And then afterwards, I'm going to share my overall thoughts and the overall themes going uh, on there. So before we go into that, in this little rapid fire, uh, some, some summaries, all of which are slightly less than a minute, I have a few caveats. Um, I don't have the original files anymore, so I downloaded it directly from YouTube. The quality, I think, will be okay. Uh, however, sometimes my short videos, I cannot get it all within one minute, so they're a little bit cut at the end, and that's unfortunately present here as well. But... As a positive, I also can add in the current standings at that time, plus uh, the projections and the results and, and so on. So it makes it a little bit more added value right there. So without further ado, here are the summaries of the past four weeks starting at early April. And after the summary, I will give you my thoughts on where the Premier League is currently at and where it will be going. In the Premier League three-way title race, all three contenders won. Arsenal, easy, 2-0 over Luton. City had a little bit of work with Villa, uh, however, then Saniola opens a gap in the wall. Foden scores a hat-trick, they win 4-1. Liverpool also had a little bit of work. Uh, brilliant Darwin goal, pressing the goalie to make it 1-0. Sheffield United actually equalized, but then uh, McAllister puts it in the right way, 3-1 for Liverpool. That Villa loss actually meant that Spurs Despite only picking up a point at West Ham, uh, actually put themselves closer to the Champions League. Uh, Villa also, probably since the Premier League will get five, will end up in the Champions League, especially since United 2 0 down at Chelsea. Turn it around 3 2, a little bit against the run of play, and then very late on in stoppage time, losing it 4 3. United probably not making it in the Champions League. Europa League, though, looks safe. In the relegation battle, Everton pick up a point at Newcastle 1 1, and Forest a huge 3 1 win over Fulham might put them into safety. And it's tied again in the Premier League. All the three teams within one point. Started out with uh, Manchester City winning away to Crystal Palace, although being down after three minutes through Mateta. However, De Bruyne and Haaland come back into the lineup and they actually score. Uh, De Bruyne with a beautiful Iki equalizer and also the 4-1, it ends 4-2. Arsenal had actually no problem at Brighton. Brighton had the plan, but they didn't have the means. And so it was a soccer penalty, then Havertz, and then a late goal by who else? Trossard that make it a 3-0 win. And the pressure was on Liverpool to win at Old Trafford, the place they don't really can win. And there was bad memories from the FA Cup. And Liverpool dominated the first half, but only had one goal through Luis Diaz. And then with the first shot and goal, it was came from after Kwanzaa mistake. Bruno Fernandes from midfield makes it 1-1. Then Kobe Maino actually puts some United into the lead. Sava can equalize with a penalty, but Liverpool cannot find the winner now in second place behind Arsenal. So Everton got three really important points against Burnley thanks to Calvert Lewin pressuring the uh, Burnley goalie, winning 1 0 in an ugly game. However, then they get the two points for more PSR breaches. They still should be fine though because they have a two point cushion on Forest and Luton, the two teams trading their relegation line. Forest themselves lose 3-1 at Spurs, although Chris Wood probably should have had a hat-trick. Uh, but so they are staying in danger. Uh, Spurs, meanwhile, solidified their fourth spot, which to surely guarantees Champions League. Fifth might also be enough where Villa sits now that had a 2-0 lead against Brentford. Thrown away within 10 minutes, however, Oli Watkins gets a late equalizer. So Villa in fifth spot, which gets at least Europa League, most likely Champions League. Uh, there's also a race for sixth spot now that might mean Europa League, which means that West Ham winning 2-1 at Wolves and Newcastle winning 1-0 at Fulham might actually put some pressure on United and might end up in the Europa League uh, as well.
We may have witnessed a breaking point in the Premier League season and the big title race this weekend when Manchester City on Saturday easily beat Luton 5-1. Yes, the goal came late, but they came from five different sources. And so City put pressure on both Liverpool and Arsenal and both were breaking. Both lost at home. Liverpool, probably even more uh, surprisingly so, losing 1-0 to Oliver Glasner's Crystal Palace. Ace is scoring the 14th minute. And then it was a Liverpool Arsenal. Liverpool had plenty of chances, however, didn't convert any. It was one of these days. Klopp saying that, you know, the pressing didn't work out all that well. And then Arsenal had a big chance to retake the lead in the table. But they also fall to Aston Villa. Yes, controlled maybe more in the first half. By the second half, uh, Una Emery made the adjustments and they struck late through Liam Bailey and Oli Watkins and Arsenal seemed also deflated. So yeah, interesting. For a little bit more on the Premier League outside of the title race. Well, two results stick out. First, Newcastle's 4-0 over Spurs. A Spurs that was as abject as the jerseys completely annihilated once more uh, in St. James's Park. And even after that game, based on goal difference, they were already behind Aston Villa. Aston Villa then winning at Arsenal puts a three-point gap. Aston Villa now the favorites to finish in the top four spot. However, maybe there's a fifth spot for the Premier League as well. Another huge one was yesterday evening when Chelsea uh, beat Everton, who still cannot get out of their re relegation zone. 6-0, 6-0, Cole Palmer scoring four goals, one with right, one with left, one with head, and one by a penalty. Really, really outstanding stuff there. We also had Fulham winning a London derby 2-0 at West Ham United. We also had Manchester United having another rather paltry performance, only a 2-2 in Bournemouth. Bruno Fernandes saving them there. We won't have a Sky Blue uh, FA Cup final, although it was so, so, so close. First off, Manchester City did their job, or Chelsea failed to do their job because Chelsea were overall the better team, had better chances, but did not have the run towards goal. And so Manchester City, and obviously really, really tired man, Manchester City, wins a really drab first FA Cup semi-final. 1-0, thanks to Bernardo Silva goal late on. How about then the big one between Manchester United and Coventry? Everyone in the run-up said Manchester United can be gutted. However, when they had a 3-0 lead, McTominay, Harry Maguire and then even already against the run of play, uh, Bruno Fernandes put them up 3-0 early in the second half. No one gave a chance to Coventry. However, they come back and Haji Wright completes the comeback into the penalty uh, in stoppage time. Then both teams hit the underside of the crossbar in overtime. Coventry actually had the winner, marginally offside. Even Casemiro win, uh, misses the first penalty, however, two misses and United is in the final. A bit more Premier League was a truncated round because of the FA Cup semi-final. Crystal Palace under former last coach Oliver Glasner got a 5-2 home win against the West Ham side, still reeling from the exit in Europe, most probably. There were some really nice goals and a very funny own goal uh, in there as well. Uh, Everton got a huge 2-0 win over Nottingham and Forest. Also two brilliant or uh, long range shots uh, in there as well. However, the talk afterwards was the club statement by Martin Nakis Ona from Nottingham Forest um, because there were three penalty calls that potentially could have been given. Not good, not good. In a title race, Arsenal, two late goals in each of the halves, get a 2-0 away win at Wolves. Pretty big for them, they take the lead in the table again, thanks to City not playing. And Liverpool did likewise. Again, two brilliant goals, one from Trent Alexander-Arnold and one from Grafenberg from far out. Uh, so those two are top of the table again, but City have a game less that are still the favourites to win it. After the midweek makeup games, the Premier League title race is now a case for two teams only. Uh, since Everton beat Liverpool in the Merseyside Derby 2 0, very bad defensive performance by Liverpool. However, Everton are now more or less safe despite all the points deductions, which I think is big news there. Meanwhile, Arsenal put some pressure on City and Liverpool uh, by beating Chelsea 5-0 at home to Kai Havert, scoring twice in the process and spending Chelsea into another tailspin, while uh, City kind of answered that one with a 4-0 away win at Brighton yesterday evening. Kevin De Bruyne is scoring his first 
added goal in the Premier League. That's also pretty remarkable. See them now, a point behind, but also have a game less, so they're still very much in control of their own destiny. We also had a United coming back against last play Sheffield United, winning 4-2, and Palace with a 2 0 Newcastle are mathematically safe. Okay. So now that we're all caught, caught up, for me there were three major storylines over these past four weeks going on in, in the Premier League. First one is of course the title race. Uh, where about a month ago we really thought that Liverpool actually have a clear path and then they played the draw against Man Manchester United and it has been going downhill ever since, if you would like. Uh, and also Arsenal stumbled once at home to Aston Villa, which came a little bit out of the blue because uh, Villa have been floundering themselves. Only City have been key keeping up and yes, they still are behind in the table. However, they have a game in hand which would get them ahead and I would say Villa have only one tough game left and that's the away game at Spurs. Where the traditional drop points, but Arsenal do have the same coming up. Liverpool will sail to a safe third spot. Now, uh, this is underwhelming for the end of Klopp's era. <clears throat> I think it's probably all right. I mean, you won a trophy and, you know, it was always going to be a tough ask. On the other side, when I look at Liverpool, I also look at the points that have been kind of taken away by the drop. I mean, I'm looking especially at the away defeat to Spurs that just did not work quite their way. So yeah, there is all, you know, the big uh, games against City and Arsenal at home where I think Liverpool probably should have had four points more as well. So these are for me the main themes uh, where Liverpool probably could be a little, a little bit better, but but in the end, now uh, you know injuries catching up, uh, players out of form, especially the front line and the back line not working well. The midfield for now is okay because last season it was not. So Liverpool third spot, I think it's still a great season for Liverpool overall, despite it being yeah majorly jettisoned by Manchester United, who not only uh, eliminated out, out of the FA Cup and also made them drop points in the league in both cases. Liverpool were the better team overall. Uh, as for the title race, as I said, City have it in control. They have only won the rough game. Arsenal uh, don't have two tough games away from home, and that's Spurs and that's United. I would say if Arsenal win out, they will be champions. Even though I can see City winning out as well, I still think they will drop points because they have a little bit of a rougher schedule. Uh, the other thing is that all three are out of Europe. So they don't have this distraction and, and, and anymore it's just the City just before the last day of the season have one additional game. That may play into it and then they have to play West Ham at home. So we gotta see. It's all advantage City at the moment, hence I'm wearing them. Speaking of Europe, that's the second major storyline for me. Uh, except for Aston Villa, everyone is out of Europe. And that is a big surprise. It also speaks that European competition is probably not as important in many cases for the, for, for the Premier League because there's more money to be made in the Premier League and this keeps catching up with them. Uh, and while I would say the Champions League performance, uh, especially with City and Arsenal getting eliminated, uh, it's not a shame to be eliminated by Real Madrid. Though so I would argue City were overall the better team. It's not a real shame that an inexperienced Arsenal squad is called out by Bayern, who are also a really good team, just not this season. I think by form I would have expected both of them to move on and meet in a semi-final, at which point uh, second place in the European uh, ranking, if not the first place for um, the Premier League, would be in there. However, the loss for Arsenal to Bayern, coupled with the loss of West Ham to Leverkusen, which was to be expected, means that the Bundesliga made a major swing and are sitting now relatively uh, well in catching up the second spot. And so it's only Aston Villa that is left to secure a spot and they need a few things to be happening. As Villa, first of all, have to win all their games. Literally all their games. Yes, against Olympiacos, they need to win. And no overtime, well, whatever. It needs to be wins. They play Olympiacos. This seems feasible. They also play a final. Let's see how, how this works. But also, the German teams need to drop points. And that might be a little bit more tricky. 
I gotta say, and you know, then there are a few other things the French teams should sh shouldn't do as well. So, so they, it's kind of a chase. Those three leagues can still end up in second spot. Um, I think now that this fifth space is on the line, maybe a little bit more focus has to be given. The Premier League has been majorly hampered by both United and Newcastle being eliminated from the Champions League group stage. That has to be said. This is this is where it's not the performance now in the quarterfinals, and then only one team made it to the semifinals because Serie A. Yes, they have three teams left, but they also lost. But all of them made it out of the group stage and moving on and making points there. In the knockout stage, without United, without Newcastle, you can you can make it. And this is where you have to pinpoint majorly on United. I gotta say, majorly on United because that was not necessary to get eliminated out of such a weak group. The last major theme was, of course, the relegation battle, and there were more points deductions. I mean, Everton had been given points back, then they were knocked down two more points, which kind of, honestly, it seems a little bit haphazard. I mean, they don't want to make strict rules because these can to be shuffled, and you know, every of these PSR uh, committees is a new com committee that then take uh, the previous committee in hand and so on. So it's kind of a little bit murky, and now the... Um, now, while they have established that only points deductions are the valid currency to measure uh, to uh, punish breaches, now the Premier League and it's the Premier League that makes up the rules. I mean, it's the clubs themselves. How how the world is one hears now that they want to get rid of these and make it not so strict. There maybe no points deductions has to be seen. I think that Everton. The two points was maybe they wanted to avoid double punishment because, you know, uh, the first punishment that was reduced then to six points was from the previous season. The current season is then with two points, so it's kind of a double whammy and you don't want to decide it. The good news for Everton, though, is that their form has picked up majorly and so they're actually um, getting better and they will stay in the league. They will move in a new, new stadium, so maybe there's an uptick for them coming and maybe an end of the painful times, although a 777 takeover is not happening. Which leaves us with Forrest, who also got, of course, docked points. Uh, not as many as Everton. And Forrest at first, you know, it's only four points. Forrest at first uh, have been very cooperative and so on. And then immediately upon the appointment, you know, Coach, uh, coach, owner Marinakis cannot help himself but to be annoyed at the powers that be as he's already in Greece. Look at Olympiakos and just go a little bit in there. And they already want to appeal this and so on. And then when they played in the head to head against Everton on the past weekend and there were penalties, yes, probably there should have been two penalties, if not more. Uh, he went all that go. All out and said, yeah, there's a big conspiracy. The war was a Luton fan and he wanted to help Luton, blah, blah, blah. Which is shaking the foundations of trust into uh, the sporting system. Which I guess for Marinakis coming from Greece is par for the course. But in the Premier League, in a, or let's say in a more serious league, this is big. This is really, really, really big, big news, and it's not a good picture. For Forrest, they don't earn sympathies. If they would have uh, not done much, I think they would be all same, same, same with them. It's still a tight race between Forrest and Luton, and I, it looks like that Forrest just might make it, and the three teams that came up will also stay go down again. What does this mean? I think it was a particularly weak promotion. I don't think that every uh, that we will see this now that uh, the Premier League teams are so much better. What we also have is that all these PSR cases uh, and the appeals process are still going on. We might get final decisions at the end of the season. The idea now, of course, is to have the e season end in such a way that judgments and appeals don't matter anymore. So in that sense, Forest being safe might actually also mean a little bit more clarity for us. There was a time where I really thought that Luton can make it, however, as of late, not looking good overall. So this is where the Premier League, from my point of view, is at. Let me know your thoughts. Who will be champions? I mean, there's also now the top four race, which got ignited by not making five, the fifth spot, which is now uh, between uh, Villa and Spurs, with Villa actually, despite Spurs having two game games, and Villa looking actually quite good for that one 
overall. Um, we also have to see now, um, will 7th spot will most likely get you into Europe because it's uh, City against United in the FA Cup final. So even if United win that one, they go in the Europa League, meaning the 7th spot will go into the Conference League. That much we have also more or less secured. Um, so there is a chance for seventh which also brings us now and let's finish at the two uh head cases of the league which is of course united and chelsea uh united under new ownership let's see where this is goes ten Hag probably is gone and then we have uh chelsea who at times looked all right but i think they've thrown away the league cup title they have thrown away the semifinal like against a very very tired city team uh, where they probably could have made a final and would have that been a final Chelsea against United uh, and now the, the case is that uh, Pochettino is under fire I probably if it was me I think such a rebuild needs more time I would not fire Pochettino right now it's not his fault the fault for their poor performances and the poorly built squad is elsewhere surely not Pochettino he hasn't really helped it but You'll be hard pressed to find someone more suitable. Don't start firing there. Those are my thoughts on the Premier League. Please let me know what you think, where things are going. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Let me also know how you like this new format. And I will talk to you soon about more things in my soccer universe. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!